Let's go! A five-star safety has entered the portal should LSU go after him. I mean, goodness gracious, Ed Orgeron has said multiple times that he's trying to get a safety for the final slot for the class of 2021. So here's the thing. This video is not really about Tyree Johnson. You guys have asked me to do more Austin Thomas content, the new general manager at LSU, and he has surrounded himself with talented people like Junior Belton and Mason Smith and a huge staff of people to not only recruit high school recruits, but recruit guys in the portal. And LSU has one final slot remaining, and it's very valuable. If you use a slot now or if you don't, it could roll over to the class of 2022 and you can have 26 slots there. So I want you to look at this video in the eyes of Austin Thomas as if he were evaluating Tyreek Johnson. Now, last week we did do a major Burns video and we followed that up with should LSU go after an offensive lineman instead. And I will get to that in just a second. But first, let's talk about Tyreek Johnson because I've gotten all these messages from you. Hey, uh, five-star safety in the portal. This is a perfect fit, right? No. <laughs> first thing is that LSU only has one slot left for the class of 2021. And what's fascinating about that is if they were Alabama, they would have 20 slots left. For real, how does Alabama get 30 extra slots compared to everyone else? Anyway, let's just take a look at Tyreek. All right, so look, Tyreek Johnson, Tristan Cr Trinity Christian Academy, a five-star defensive back. We've done really well with five-star defensive backs out of state, with Jamal Adams out of Texas, and then even out of Florida, uh, Patrick Peterson and Kevin Tolliver. So, uh, you know, a 100% hit rate, right? So we should definitely go after Tyreek Johnson because we need a safety. The problem is he's not even a safety. First, here's Tyreek Johnson's stats. We're moving quickly through this. Eight total tackles through two seasons. As far as Ohio State is concerned, if you are a corner... It makes sense because Ohio State has produced a lot of elite corners. Jeff Akuda, Kendall Sheffield, Sean Wade, who wasn't good last season. We'll get to that in a second. And uh, Damon Arnett. So all four of those guys were pretty high draft picks, particularly uh, the non-Wade names we just listed. So maybe Ohio State doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, wrong. Kerry Coombs is our defensive coordinator. He is a former defensive backs coach in the NFL. So the thing is, if Kerry Coombs thought uh, Tyree Johnson could play safety, he would have moved him to safety because that's where Ohio State needed more help because their secondary was really bad at both corner and safety, especially if you compare it to Ohio State standards. But even then, they would not play Johnson. Then he played the Scarlet and Gray spring game, started in that game because the other players were injured, and even after starting there, he still decided to transfer. So, two major red flags here. Yes, Ohio State does have really good players, especially at cornerback. So, why not move to safety? Maybe he's dead set on being a corner because corners get drafted higher than safeties overall. Now, safeties still get drafted at a relatively high clip. That might be it. I don't understand, but to each their own. To another report here. Played just 77 snaps in six games last season for Ohio State. Okay? Um, although he took first-team reps at cornerback, uh, Seven Banks and Cameron Brown are still likely to beat them and Ryan Watts and some other young guys. So he just wasn't as good as the other guys. Uh, now, there could be something more. They could have uh, a vendetta against him. I don't know. I don't cover Ohio State enough. But based on two different websites and based on other things that I've read, he just wasn't as good as the other guys. Now... Here's the thing, okay? Some of you are probably saying, well, if he was listed, why was he listed as a safety for 247? And then can't we just move him to safety when he gets there? Well, that's the risk you take. Would he want to come to LSU and actually finally move positions? The answer to that is maybe. I don't know. But the thing is, is LSU does not need corners. They don't. They are fine at cornerback. They need safeties in the mind of Ed Orgeron. I would like to get another safety, but he better be a safety. So we'll get to Major Burns in just a second. 
what I want to show you here is what really is at the center of this whole transfer portal dynamic. I like the transfer portal. I like players having mobility because once you sign on that dotted line for that school, you're locked in. And in old days, you would have to sit out an extra year before you went to another school to reestablish yourself, or you would have to go to a lower level and uh, to keep playing and then transfer somewhere else. So I like the player mobility thing, but the portal has gotten uh, to be a little ridiculous. Now, why do players enter the portal? Well, a lot of it is for a new opportunity, especially Tyreek Johnson. You go from Florida to Ohio State, you're making this simply as a football move because why would you want to go to Florida and then have to deal with brutal winners in Ohio while you're also sitting the bench? So this is one thing I wanted to show you, and I want you to look at all these fans of these teams begging this guy to come to their school, not knowing anything about him as a player, not looking up any statistics on him or or any reports on him. And you see, I mean, it's nonstop. Player, just, just fans wanting Tyreek Johnson to come to their school. Do they even know if the schools want him? I don't know. So, yeah, you got to understand, when you're a high school recruit, you're constantly being written about by your local paper, by national sites, because people want to know where you're going. And that dopamine hit of constant attention is a pretty weird dynamic in college football because you're a bigger celebrity more often than not in high school than you'll ever be at college unless, of course, you become an elite NFL draft or All-American type of player. So what the transfer portal has done is, you know, what what generates buzz and clicks is what people might do and what they could do for your team. And this is what going into the portal does. You got you have people following you on Twitter and sending you messages and saying, "Please come here." You're being worshipped again. And you know, you you can't underrate that, especially in a year where a lot of these kids have to stay inside and 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 whatever. So whenever you see an athlete, especially a high-level athlete, tweet out like a random cryptic tweet or whatnot, it makes a lot of sense when you really think about it. Because in your teenage years, especially if you're a five-star recruit, when you're 15, 16, and 17, you got everyone hitting you up. But then when you get to Ohio State and you're on the bench and there's nothing really going on, that I mean, you're still a celebrity. You're, there's still people tweeting you and hitting you up, but it's not quite like this from just anonymous people from all around. I want y'all to guess which college football coach this is. It is a current D1 college football coach at, I believe, UCA, Central Arkansas, the Purple Turf. Uh, this is legend Mike Norvell, head coach of the Florida State Seminoles, I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. Mike got you. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so Tyreek uh, Johnson. This is interesting. Students athlete at the Ohio State University. Okay, I don't care. I make grammar mistakes all the time on Twitter. But this would make me scream red flag right here. His pin post. So for those that don't know how Twitter works, you have a an opportunity to pin a tweet. It could be any tweet that you've ever made. And his pin post is from this seven on seven camp in 2017 of him slamming a guy to the ground. If I want to play with kids, I'll have my own. This is ridiculous. I don't care who you are. This does not make you look cool at all. In fact, I would stay 10,000 feet away. First off, this is obviously pass interference and totally unnecessary. Second off, this guy pops right back up. Now, I'm looking at you. Yes, you. You watching this video right now. Remember earlier in the video, I said to put your shoes, your shoes. I said to put yourself in the shoes of Austin Thomas. Look at this from his perspective. Here's a hint. This video was not about Tyreek Johnson. This video has more to do with slot management, okay? 
how you manage a roster, which is what Austin Thomas gets paid to do by Ed Orgeron to do the research and look at the kids in the portal and the recruiting uh, aspect as well. So with Tyreek Johnson, once again, he could be a fantastic kid. I wish him nothing but the best. But based on what you know, what you saw today, would you want to spin your final slot on him? Yes, he has three years of eligibility remaining. Yes, he's a former five-star recruit. But he's not really ever played safety nor shown a willingness to do that. Uh, had his opportunity in the spring and uh, the Scarlet and Gray spring game. He started, and it still wasn't good enough. And look, once again, with this three years of eligibility, he could end up being the next champ Bailey. I don't know. I don't know. With that said, obviously that is a no. I would not want to use the slot on him, especially over Major Burns, a former four-star from Baton Rouge. It got a little icy at the end of his recruitment. He ended up going to Georgia. I know that there's mutual interest now that Burns is in the portal for him to come back. Is that a better use of the slot? I don't know, which is why you, yes, you, I'm looking at you again, Austin Thomas or whatever your name may be. Uh, let me know in the chat right now. Is that how you would use your final slot? So that's the thing that you thought this video was about Tyreek Johnson, but this is about the new age of college football, okay? And now here's the thing. If you had two slots remaining or even three slots remaining, you would definitely take Tyreek Johnson. That is worth the risk if you had that many slots remaining in your class. But that is not the case. So what's going to change in college football is how you manage your slots. Is it worth just letting this slot roll over for the class of 2022 where you can have 26 slots and you can offer a Jordan Matthews, a good three-star safety out of Lafayette that all of us love? You know, that, that's why all of this is so very important to do your research and all of those things. So yeah, it's a new age. You see how much this has changed? All the thousands of names that are in the portal and the thousands of high school recruits that are out there. It's tough. This stuff is really, really, really tough, especially considering LSU has those scholarship penalties coming up. And I know we've discussed this uh, in a few other videos, but this is just another point about that thing. That's the thing. This video wasn't about a, a, a stupid Twitter clip or anything like that. It was about something more than that, that all college football uh, teams are going to be facing moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this video today. It's fun uh, to talk about things like this. Here's the cool thing. We got all kinds of film studies and stuff, including the great Eli Ricks uh, down below. If you want to see our offense and defensive depth chart piece, boom! And boom, it is power hour. LSU, boom. Three bounds today. And we're doing Sketty tonight. Let's go.